Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to create a combo chart um, that combines both the clustered uh, columns and the scattered. So just like the one that we have here, so it has both types. Um, so the user, uh, so let me explain the business scenario here and then let's see why we need this combo chart. So what I'm trying to show here is that um, I have a set of market data um, of like, let's say people's base pay. And then I have it by job grades, which goes from the low of one, grade one to the high of grade six. Um, and now I have two job families. Let's say like in the market, um, we have two similar kind of jobs. One is called IT services, whatever that means. Uh, the other is data analytics, which is kind of hot uh, lately. We want to compare their market pay, which we can do, of course, uh, with the cluster bar, as you can see here. But then let's add one more layer um, on this visual, which is now we know how the market is paying for those two different job families by grades. Um, can we see how internally we are paying those employees uh, by, um, by our uh, job grades as well? So. So here in this combo chart, it's very easy to see that um, our internal employees are plotted here um, just in line with all those bars uh, with different colors um, standing for different job families. And then you can easily see how um, they are paid compared to the market. Um, so um, like I could have uh, tweak the data a little bit so you can see probably let's say for the IT services we're paying close enough to the market but then maybe for the data analytics we're paying low um, compared to the market so you can see that much easily uh, with this combo chart so now uh, without further ado let me uh, show you how to do that so this is the data set that we are starting with um, one is um, the job Great with market data and one set is the employee's uh, employee data. So I have the employee ID. Um, it can be any extra from your system. Um, the data that you absolutely need is of course people's grades, uh, people's job family. So we know which um, job family they are going to be aligned to, their salary, which are in thousands. Um, and then we're going to create a helper column in the sack. So first, let's start with the market data. So with this table, um, it's very easy to create um, a, com a clustered column chart, like the one that we are seeing here. So um, actually, you know, what well, we don't need the job grade. So I, you need to kind of like beautify this um, chart a little bit. So for job grade, we don't need it. So let's remove it. Um, and then for my chart, um, it's a personal preference, but I always want it to be a bit wider. Um, and uh, I don't uh, want the overlap. Uh, so I will say I just need zero. So I want to make sure um, I have for each job grades, I want to have those two market data um, side by side so I can compare them, but I don't want them to be too close to each other. So let me change the gap width to, yeah, something like this. Um, so that makes me more comfortable. Um, and then um, you can also do all kinds of format. I usually get rid of the uh, grid line. Um, I also change the color um, to usually for the bars, I usually change it change them to something that's in the same uh, in the same column here um, but not too um, so they can distinguish with each other but not too bright because we are gonna layer uh, the dots in front um, on top of it so you don't want the bars to be too shiny there so um but you can really do what kind of uh, whatever kind of format that you need so now we have got the bar chart set up. So now let's layer on uh, the scatter points. So to do that, uh, one thing that you do need to understand is that for scattered charts, uh, they always need an X um, axis and the Y axis. So the Y axis is easy because we know it's going to be their salary. Uh, and then it's actually going to be in the same axis, um, the primary axis. So you don't need a secondary axis for it. Um, but how to figure out the 
the x-axis. So what you can tell here is that for both charts, like for the job grids, it's in the middle of both charts because for, let's say just for this grid three, uh, both charts are for, uh, both bars are for chart three, uh, for, uh, for job grid three, right? Um, so that means um, if we have um, our employee scatter dots aligned to grid three, it's gonna be right in the middle but we don't want it to be in the middle. We actually want it to be on both sides. So to do that, uh, you actually need to create a helper um, column here. So let's say this is my helper column, um, which I call column for position, for chart position. So I know um, this column is created just for the charts. It, the data in it does not mean anything. So what I want to do is that um, if my if my job family is data analytics, which means that it goes to the right, uh, then I want my grade to be on the right of whatever grade it is as well. So um, the thing I test out with my format is that it's the best to just add 0 0.25. Um, but I'll show you how it looks um, if we change this number. So it's really, this is really just a placeholder. It doesn't, the number itself doesn't mean anything. So so we said if uh, this is data analytics, we um, the position that we look at is four uh, plus uh, 0 0.25. Otherwise we go four minus 0 0.25 and we close bracket. Uh, let me see why it doesn't work because we're doing uh, zero if, oh yeah. So we need to say if R4 is equal to data analytics, yeah, and then close it. So this is a position for your bar and then you just copy the formula down and then that's the X axis that you need. Um, so let's create the data analytic uh, dots first. So what you really need to do is just go click anywhere, right click, and then select data and then add a new data. So for the new data, I want to name it data analytics employee, employee. Um, and then for the series value, now it's only uh, asking for your Y axis. For, and for this, I just need the salary. And then you just um, select the range for your data analytics salary. Note that it's only for the rows where you have job family as data analytics and then close it. Uh, and then actually let's do the same for IT services. So just make sure you write the name properly, services employee. And then we do the same thing for the serial value. We choose the Y value and then we choose only the rows with IT uh, services. I'm doing it on this side, but it really should just be those call, um, those rows. Okay, so now we're done there. And then now the chart looks funky, uh, but it's okay. Don't worry. Go to design and change chart type um, and then go combo. So here you can see that by default, they um, have our um, data set as a line, but we don't want it to be a line chart. We want it to be scatter. We want it to be scattered, yeah. Okay, so now this is how it looks like. Uh, again, it's not as what we want, but do not panic. Um, select um, any dots, let's say, um, just select data, um, and then go there and then select just any one of it. And then now you can see that the serial value is blank. It's asking you to, to fill it. And then for this Siri, uh, series X value, um, this is data analytics. So we use our helper, uh, helper column here. Make sure those two reference are identical for uh, whatever roles that you refer to. Um, and then for IT services, do the same. So we select the range that we need. Okay. So now after you okay it, you really, you pretty much have the chart that we hope for. So now it's just a matter of like making the dots to be any format that you need. Um, I usually like it to be a bit larger so it stands out. Um, I want the color to be bright but not too shiny. Um, I might also want to 
border for my line so you can tell how many dots we have there in case there's overlap and then I do the same for my other um, data series and then basically make the dot a bit larger and then I have a brighter color of um, whatever um, yeah let me have a brighter color which color do I want uh, yeah this one maybe and now I want to have a border have a dark border for it as well yeah yeah so yeah here we go so that is and then you can change the title to um, you know what let's say market pay competitiveness And then you choose ID services versus data analytics. Yeah, so we can name it to that title. And then let's just uh, take a moment to look at the data itself to see what it's telling us. So you can see that, for example, um, we can see evidently IT services is paid lower than data analytics for all grades. And then in terms of our internal pay, uh, you can see first our um, IT services employees are paid uh, pretty much aligned with the market. Some are lower, some are higher, but then in general, it's pretty okay. It's pretty aligned. Uh, for data analytics, um, it looks like it has a wider range. Like the, some people are paid really high compared to the market, but there are also people who are paid really low. Um, it just seems to be a, having a wider range. Um, and then, uh, but then if you averaged out, um, they are probably going to be paid uh, roughly the same as uh, the ID services uh, employees. So yeah, so that is how um, not only you can make this chart, but also analyze the chart um, and uh, tell the whole story to um, whoever this chart matters to. Um, okay, so I think that's everything I want to share with you today, and uh, I hope that you like it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. If you have any question, please leave me a comment, and I will talk to you very soon.